patient notes. Gordon Barbara, session one. Wake up, Miss Gordon. Wake up, injector. Another dose. I'm awake, you bastard. Good. Who is that man? Ask him when he gets here. Thank you, Miss Gordon. I was afraid that my preferred interrogation method would not be necessary. Do you know why I wear these syringes on my hands? Because you're insane? I usually disperse my toxin as an aerosol. It's efficient, but not pure. Now the terror I can elicit with a concentrated dose administered directly into the bloodstream, that is beautiful to witness. The long-term damage is more severe, of course. Are you done talking? I am, but you have barely begun. You'll be incoherent when my toxin dissolves the wall between your conscious mind and your suppressed subconscious nightmares. But as those fears slowly recede, they'll take this pathetic defiance with them. You're still talking. Very well. Get that fellow away from her. He's gone. Did he hurt you? Spare me the good cop, bad cop routine. No, 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 no. See, you're supposed to keep me talking. Play for time. Wait for Batman. That's what he taught you, right? I've got nothing to say to you. <laughs> me? I talked for hours. Because I knew, right? Batman was on his way to save me. And the bastard just let me talk. Eventually, I just... Ran out of things to say, so trust me, you can't count on Bruce to save you. Bruce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scarecrow doesn't know. It's our little secret. Now here's another. Batman likes to play the hero, Barbara, and he's pretty good at it, but it's an act. Batman's not about saving the innocent, no, no, he's about punishing the guilty. And don't get me wrong, he'll look for you, or he'll try. But when it comes down to it, when he has to make a choice between you and the mission, he'll choose the mission. Every. Time. You're wrong. Look me in the eye and say that. Jason? Jason, this is wrong! This is justice. He left me. He lost you. And he mourned for you. Come home. I can't go back. You don't know what Joker did, Barbara. He hollowed me out and filled me back up with hate and... Jason, we can fix it. I can fix it! I know now what to do. I take all this pain, all this blackness, and I put it all in a bullet, and I put it right between Bruce's eyes. Joker's dead, Jason. You want revenge on the man who hurt you? You've got one shot. Come back to the manor. Let us help you. Don't let Joker win. How's Alfred? He misses you. We all do. The cloudburst is charged, Knight. It's time. Someone put a gag on her. Anyone hurts her, they're a dead man. Tape 8, October 15th. Still no sign of the preacher. No records, nothing. Something tells me he won't stay hidden for long. For the Lord hath designed the most cruel and dark place. Yes, he has. It's where we put the heathen, the guilty men and women in his pavilion of pain. Where lakes of fire burn and hot coals fall as hailstones from a black sky. You see, Gotham's days are numbered. I've seen it. He's done shown it to me. He's shown me the fire. He's shown me the bodies writhing in flames. Because that's what's waiting for you, you who don't accept me into your heart. I am the messenger of truth, for the Lord hath anointed me with his sacred oil. He hath separated me above all others, and promised me and my children their rightful place 
in the new kingdom. Yeah, that's right. You will be made princes of all the earth. Amen. <laughs> Blackfire's sermons are getting worse. He's not waiting for Armageddon. He's bringing it. And I'm going to be right there when he does. Tape 11, October 19th. Going back over some old interviews I did on Gotham's homeless. Numbers were dropping. No one knew why. I think there might have been a link to Blackfire. My name's Terry Noonan. I worked the sewers best part of 20 years. You name it, I've seen it. Walls of fat so thick they'd swallow you up. Rats as big as dogs. Enough teeth and hair to give you nightmares. It's a different world down there. I understand you've got a theory, Mr. Noonan. Terry, please. Some people like to think the homeless are disappearing because Gotham's pulling them out of the gutter. But you think different? I've heard things. Strange things. Voices. Chanting. Chanting? Like church. It's been like this for months. I hear it more often, and it's getting louder. Have you ever tried to find it? Hey, I ain't stupid. Besides, none of my business. If you were smart, you'd think the same. Noonan went missing not long after this. Cops found his body stuffed in one of those giant fat deposits. They said it was an accident. I figure he found something he wasn't supposed to. What the hell are you up to, Blackfire? Tape 23, October 26th. I was searching the archives and this little gem cropped up. Cops arrest a vagrant who's had a run-in with Blackfire. Guess we're starting to get some idea what this whack job's been up to. Please state your name. I haven't got a name. Not anymore. We're his children. His disciples. Who? Deacon Blackfire. The one true messenger. The Redeemer. He can save Gotham. He can save us all. Well, he sounds like a nice guy. You mock me, you fool. You don't know the power you're dealing with. Okay, why don't you tell me? A thousand years he has walked the earth, and a thousand more he will reign. You're smiling. You think I'm crazy. Hey, you're free to believe whatever you want. I doubted him too once, and then I saw it. The blood is his power. He bathes in it. I'm sure he does. You can see it in their eyes when he draws the blade across their throat. They see it then. The light. Okay, buddy, take it easy. I have to leave. We have work to do. The final sacrifice is coming. It will grant him everlasting life. Hey, sit down. Restrain him. Get off me. An army of homeless killers? Human sacrifices? Bathing in blood? I hope they're planning another sacrifice. You can't win the awards with our little human tragedy. Tape 25, October 30th. Got my hands on this forensic report. Human sacrifice. It's real. They're really happening. The deceased M. Hollis, located in the abandoned premises, front-facing room to Hammond Close. Male, 33 years, approximately 6 feet, 210 pounds, brown hair. Found lying face up on a table central to the room. Contusions on the wrist and ankles, indicating the victim was restrained with a thick cord or rope. The neck has been cut, deep incision severing the esophagus and main arteries. The body appears to have been drained of blood. Victim is naked. Clothes have been burned as well as personal effects. No sign of murder weapon. Symbols have been drawn onto the walls in victim's blood. Photographs locked. Scene secured by Detective Russo at 2100 hours. Something big's happening. Blackfire's here, I know it. He wants that final sacrifice, but where? I need that last piece of the puzzle, then bam, son of a bitch is mine. A big piece of the puzzle just fell into place. Lady of Gotham. That's where it's going down. I couldn't wait for you, Batman. Sorry. This one's too important to miss. Guess you're wondering what the Lady of Gotham connection is. Turns out there was a black fire tied up with the Miyagani people. His name crops up in tribal stories. Seems like they shot him with arrows. Shot him in a cave. You want to know where that cave is supposed to be? You got it. Directly beneath the Lady of Gotham. Looks like the irony didn't escape our preacher. Cash ran this guy's prints. Turns out he's got a past. Tax evasion, fraud. One file dates back to the 20s. Cash thinks it's gotta be a mistake. 
Part of me wishes Blackfire was telling the truth. I guess we all want to believe, huh? Too bad he's just another con man. Cells. Who are they? Their blood was contaminated. Like yours. What? I mean, I'm not the only one. I think you're the key to helping them. Those smiles. I've seen that before. It's him. The Joker. We'll find a cure, Henry. We're in danger, Batman. You can't risk that kind of evil escaping into the world. He should kill them. All of them. It's the only way to be sure. That's all for now, Henry. Interview over. Mrs. Q, this is Mr. J. Come in. Over. Reading you loud and clear, Mr. J. My infiltration remains utterly flawless. Operation Pudding Break is a go. Yippee! How are my babies? They're in rude health, my dear. All dying to meet Mommy. Now, you remember the plan, don't you? Yeah. I don't really want to hit you over the head, though. It's gonna hurt. We've been over this, my little knuckle duster. It's the only way to convince Batman that I'm to be trusted. You do want to kill him, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, after that. Bird Boy's coming. See you soon. Mr. J, over and out. Two years ago. I uncovered Joker's plot to unleash a genetically enhanced army on Gotham. The drug he used to modify his henchmen was called Titan. Before I could stop him, Joker ingested a massive dose of the Titan formula and mutated into a gigantic abomination. I managed to defeat him, but his overdose had devastating side effects. Joker was dying, and he needed a cure. To ensure my cooperation, he infected my blood with his own leaving me no choice but to help him. But that wasn't all. He contaminated Gotham's blood banks, too. The result? The patients currently quarantined here. Joker's mutated blood behaves like a prion infection, attacking the brain and transforming these people into him. Unless we find a way to reverse the process, no one will be able to stop what he has unleashed. Yeah, what's left of it? What's the D? 
deal, Crane. Why are we here? Because you share something. A fear that strikes at you from the shadows, hunts you, keeps you afraid of the dark. Yeah, yeah. We all fear Batman. Tell us something we don't know. Like how we kill him. That's my job. This cocky cop shot in the first Bat fanatic to muscle in on our turf. I'd sooner piss on him than trust him. The coin says give him a chance. Sod the stinking coin. When I make a deal, I like to look a man in the eye. Did you bring a footstool? Yeah, real funny, Arv. You keep talking like that, and Scarecrow's little ceasefire ain't gonna happen. <sighs> Let this Arkham Knight run his army. Leave him and Scarecrow to chase the bat. We can take care of ourselves. I'm having nothing to do with your bait job. Aside from my cut, of course. You just make sure our men are armed and their guns are loaded. Oh, don't you worry, Arv. The guns will be loaded. Every bleeding second of this truth. Look at you, getting claret everywhere. Look like you've done ten rounds with Grundy. Oh, my arm, I think it's broken. This had better be good, otherwise I'll give you a matching pair. What happened? Oh, we got to the docks, like you said. All these men, they had the same idea as us. Someone warned them, didn't they? You, you dirty, filthy grass. Of course, please. Someone got the job on all of us. They, they killed everyone. What? He went through us like we weren't there. I, I never seen anything like it. The Arkham Knight. He had a gun in my mouth. He said this was a family now. We all got to get along. And he said, you better know your place. Cheeky bastard. Hey. Don't shoot the messenger, right, boss? Nah. I could break his bloody arm, though. <laughs> oh, boss. Ah, my arm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the circus of strange is coming to a town near you. Never before has such a host of talented performers gathered in one place to amaze and entertain. Be astounded by Big Top. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Who knows? But I guarantee it's the most gigantically grotesque assortment of blast you have ever seen. Be dumbfounded by the acrobatic oddity that is Cheyenne. Stare open mouths as these come joined triplets who defy the limits of the human body and its imagination. And last, but by no means least, be stunned and horrified by the combustible wonder that is phosphorus red. So, you're gonna see it. To believe it, come and join us, and you'll never look at the world the same way again! Yanasha, my dearest son. Oh, my perfect child, I make these recordings so that you are not alone. So that you know Daddy loves his son. Daddy loves his little pig. <laughs> The circus has traveled far, and we have brought joy to many sad people. They join us now like a big family, growing week by week. Now they feel no pain. They know nothing of misery. I call them my dollatrons. <laughs> to each new home we move at night, finding a fresh patch of earth to inhabit. Secret places in forgotten parts of town. Ugly wastelands, where the locals stumble unawares into a candy striped tent. <laughs> the Dollatrons are the first to greet them with open arms and <sighs> perfect faces. The climax of the show is when I take them to see Mother. Oh, I tell you, they are amazed by my imagination. Confounded by my dexterity, as each is transformed into a beautiful work of art. But Mother is hard to please. She wants more, always more. Never satisfied, always driving me to work harder, to obtain perfection. And I will. Night has drawn its curtain yet again, and the circus moves on. Our numbers swollen? to a different patch of earth. 
On the dark horizon, the building tops glimmer, the heat and smog of industry shrouds a den of criminals and beasts. Gotham is her name. Yanosh, I'll tell you, the circus has come home. My dear Yanosh, it is time you learned the truth about your mother, your real mother. I remember not her name or how she found me wallowing in that pit of despair. <laughs> oh, like an angel, she swept into my turvy world, dragged me, screaming, <laughs> from shapeless chaos, and wrapped me in her arms. She was a beauty, Yanosh, a masterpiece, perfect in every way, until Mother Goat found her. Imagine my horror when I emerged from that dreamy soup and discovered what she'd done. Placenta face, cork on smile, ribbons of ruptured flesh. Ooh, the nails had done their work. But by then my seed was already sown. Your life already begun. Mother would have killed you both had I not stopped her. <laughs> Saved you from her rage. <laughs> Day and night I worked. Month after month. Sculpting her loathsome clay. To recapture the beauty that saved me that night. The night of your creation. She clung to me as you grew. As I toiled to make her right again. But nothing, please, Mother Goat! Nothing. I did all I could to fix her, to make her perfect. But by the time you came along, I couldn't even look upon that spoiled canvas of her face. I couldn't let that be the face that greeted you in this world. I had to end it, Yalosh. For you. For Mother. She left me no choice. I thought it best we meet alone, Edward. I know what you're doing, Crane. Talking to me away from Cobblepot and the others. You're appealing to my ego. Is it working? Ha! I don't have an ego, Crane. I'm far too brilliant. Especially for the likes of you. Of course, Edward. But nonetheless, we have a mutual foe. A foe I could vanquish with but one of my cerebral lobes intact. Yet, here you are. Proposing an alliance that would let you bask in my luminescent glory. But what if you failed, Edward? What if, by some underhand means, of course, the Batman were to humiliate you again? Absurd! I know, Edward, it's a frightening thought. How many failures can even your enviable reputation withstand? But... If the bat were distracted and tugged in too many directions by too many threats, why, then you would be assured of the upper hand. I, uh, I don't know how to respond to your ridiculous insinuations, so all I will say is this. Tell me which day you plan to attack Gotham, and maybe, just maybe, if you're lucky, I will coincidentally put my entirely separate and superior master plan into effect. How kind, Edward. I will keep my fingers crossed. Who is this? Ah, Miss Kyle. You have the privilege of conversing with me, the Riddler, Gotham's premier supervillain and intellectual colossus. And I'm honored, Eddie. Really? Bye. Wait, wait. I'll get to the point. I find myself in need of your unique skill set, your street smart, as your intellectually challenged kind adorably calls them. I'm going to adorably hang up on you, Eddie. No, 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 listen. I need something acquired, something valuable. Sorry, Eddie. It's just that I have all these clients who aren't insecure little power-mad man-children. <sighs> Fine. You may name your fee. Information. Ah, the most valuable commodity of all. Scarecrow's planning something involving Batman. 
I might be furnished with the absurd particulars of his ridiculous scheme. <laughs> I'll get you what you want, Eddie, if you tell me what I need to know. Right, okay. Riddler bot memory formatted, adaptive AI algorithms uploaded, joints oiled. Now, <clears throat> give my creation life! Ah, damn it! Useless hunk of dead metal. Do you want to become a semi-automated theme park mannequin? Because that's the fate in store for you. Problem, Eddie? Ah, Miss Kyle. <laughs> You're here. And you already have company. Almost, anyway. Did you lose your friend's battery? Why, you... yes. <laughs> in a manner of speaking, anyway. I'm depleted. And always compensating for it, too. <laughs> oh, Catwoman, your wit never ceases to... occur. Now... I need you to procure a set of rechargeable energy cells for me. Stag Enterprises' Nimbus Tech will work. I'm sure Wayne Enterprises has an equivalent. Got it. It's been a pleasure as always, Eddie. Except for the talking to you part. Wait! At least take a glimpse at what it is you're supposed to be stealing. There. In the robot's chest cavity. Go on. It won't bite. Eddie, there's no... <laughs> what the hell? Eddie! Make this thing let me go! Batteries? You think I needed batteries? Oh, Miss Kyle, you underestimated my bespoke power supply innovations, and that was your downfall. What is this, Eddie? This is, you are, bait. You see, I've identified what I believe to be some sort of attachment between you and Batman. The base nature of this attachment, quite frankly, disgusts me. But it will bring him here. You'll regret this! <laughs> the world's greatest detective does not frighten me! He's not the reason you'll regret it. You should invest in better guards, Crane. And you should invest in some manners. Who are you? Another pretender to the cow? Call me the Argon Knight. <laughs> Another child of the asylum set free. Tell me, what tortured soul cowers behind that mask? It doesn't matter who I am, I'm here because we want the same thing. Batman dead. <laughs> you made short work of my guards, but Batman is a very different proposition. One for which I am fully prepared. Those guards I killed, I could replace them with an army. An army trained in his methods. Trained by whom? Me. And what would you know about Batman? His fear. Very well. You have my attention, Arkham Knight. Three billion is a significant investment. People are willing to pay. And what exactly would we be getting for our money? Tanks, drones, a highly trained infantry. You think you can just bring tanks into Gotham? We hold a city ransom. We create panic. Then chaos. A distraction. As they run scared, we emerge. Take over his habitat. Every rooftop, road, and back alley. We draw him out of the shadows and chip away until he has nowhere left to hide. And no one left to hide behind. If you want him dead, why come to me? You seem capable. He needs to suffer. I suffered, so he will too. So, it's personal. Well, there are many in this city with a gift for causing harm. Not that kind of pain. The real kind. Uh, you want him afraid. I've seen what your toxin does. I want that. You're well informed about all of us, Arkham Knight. But you're wrong about something. I don't want Batman dead. I want him unmade. He's better off dead. Kill him and you martyr him. You make him a legend. But break him, humiliate him, terrify him, and hold him up for the world to see. Then he's nothing but a man. Look, you can do what you want, Crane, but when you're done, I will kill him. Very well, but know 
Father, it will be an act of mercy when you do. Damn it! Sorry, sorry. Dropped it. Jittery hands. I keep thinking someone's gonna barge through the door at any moment. The scotch probably didn't help. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to introduce myself, didn't I? My name is Alex Sartorius. Dr. Alex Sartorius. And this, uh, well, I suppose this is my confession. Twenty years ago, I went into business with my friend and business partner, Simon Stagg. Oh, it, it feels strange talking into this thing. I've never been one for the limelight. Never cared for attention. He was the businessman, I was the scientist. Stag Enterprises was a fine name by me. And we did fine work, too. I want you to remember that, whatever comes out. The cure for the Tugela virus, that was us. The treatment for Collier syndrome, that was us, too. No, not us. That was me. I never cared about the financials, of course. I never needed to. Don't you worry, Alex, Simon used to say, and I believed him. Believed him right up to the day he told me there was a big, gaping hole where next year's budget was supposed to be. I wonder now, of course, if he was lying. I mean, can you blame me? If, if he had just come out and asked me, I'd probably have said no. I, I, I'm no bleeding heart, but if there'd been no need... Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Jeez. Anti-anxiety meds, they, 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 they rattle your brain. What I'm trying to say is that day, the day we ran out of money, that's when the weapons contracts began. Hello? <laughs> yes, yes, hello. I am in a better mood today. I have discovered a pharmaceutical cure for paranoia, you see. You put the anti-anxiety pill straight into the whiskey bottle and you swirl it around. <laughs> oh no, uh, where was I? Oh yes, chemical weapons, biological weapons, a oh, wonderful thing. We went into business to save people, but it turns out that killing them paid better. Not well enough for Simon though, that greedy, grasping parasite, that bastard. There, there, there are many buyers for this stuff, you see, They're not legal buyers anyway, so you had to be competitive, but how can you do research quickly when human testing is illegal? Not to mention life-threateningly dangerous, unethical, unfathomably risky. Well, well, it's obvious. You do human testing anyway. <laughs> he, he never, he never told me where they came from. Just that no one would miss them. You think I want forgiveness? You, you think this is some? Desperate mea culpa. I was raised Catholic, but I chose science over faith. This is not about me, this pathetic, drunken confession. I struck my bargain. Let him threaten me into silence while I worked on my vaccines, my cures. So don't judge me, whoever you are. Whichever junior reporter at the Gotham Herald was lucky enough to press the play button on this device. No! This isn't about me. This is about him. He's gotten worse. We're a pharmaceutical company in name alone these days. It's all weapons. Some to the army, even more to the people the army's fighting. And now Scarecrow's here? I know what they're doing. They're taking my technology, my mass inoculation device, and they're turning it into something twisted, something wrong. Well, I won't let that happen. I won't turn a blind eye anymore. This confession will be my epitaph, the proof that I was not content to weigh the good I've done against the evil done by him anymore. If you were listening to this- Dr. Sartorius, Mr. Stagg would like a word. 